We're gonna get really geeky here and we're gonna combine power armor and pilots and MBTI cognitive functions, etc., etc. Enneagram 2. What's up team? Welcome back to Geek Psychology. So we're gonna we're gonna get pretty geeky on this. We're gonna dive into this model here. I'm not really going to be explaining too much about the specifics of cognitive functions and the Enneagram type, but just a framework of looking at your type. And this is also something that I do want to bring into a game that I'm making. I, I've bounced around forever now with the, um, the idea of, are you controlling four different characters? Or are you one type? You know, are you controlling all your different personified cognitive functions, or are you the combination of all those? In a game sense, it just it works better to have the whole set, <laughs> right? You are the INFJ model, the type, as opposed to you're controlling four different characters, or other people are controlling some of the characters, and then you get just this kind of nonsense. But also, it's a good way of looking at your type. So whether you're into games or not, um, kind of hopefully you are if you're watching this channel, but you don't have to be. Um, this should give you another way of looking at it, all right? So let's just go right into it. So the way I've been thinking about it is you have the pilot. You have the person within the suit. Right? That's the Enneagram type. It could be the, the active challenger. It could be the peacemaker. It could be whatever it is. I, not going to, like I said, get into all those. Um, but that pilot has its own worldview, and it has its own stats, it has its own strengths and weaknesses, things like that, and different motivations, emotional motivations. And then, outside of that, you have your tools, you have your cognitive functions. Those are the things that you use to accomplish the goals of the Enneagram type. Um, so. This is, this is the part that I really want to talk about here. So I've been imagining you have four different main suit variations. You have the EP types with the Vanguard suit that, um, you know, up close and personal, very fast moving suit, right? It's all about getting into the mix and, and creating things. Um, the EJs would have the executors. It's more about controlling the situation. Um, through either boosting your allies or through like more efficient attacks and, and kind of delegation and stuff like that. Um, and then the IJs would be the, the protectors, right? So you would have more about stability with SI or kind of long range vision of what's happening, maybe scouting drones and things like that up at the top, you know, flying around so that you can see where things are going, where the battlefield is going. And then the IPs, I don't really like this name, but you'd have the purifier suit. And it's all about refining those decisions. So as you would expect, accuracy or um, kind of following intent of what the enemies are doing and kind of analyzing that so that you can get a read on it and you can predict what's going to happen. Those are the cores. Like that's, that's what's really powering most of your abilities because your cognitive functions go through, they're kind of like filtered through those. From there you would have the different components. You'd have your support, your sort of augment for the core, right? What's helping that out, your auxiliary function. Um, and then you would have your relief or weakness that's, that's a part of the suit. Like the, in a relief sense, it would be like it's going to protect you in some way, right? It's going to either push you more to empowering and um, enhancing your core abilities, or it's going to defend and keep you kind of separated or shielded or locked down or whatever it is, like in a, in a positive way. Um, and then you could also think about it as a weakness, like maybe there's some sort of innate, um, like a dice roll, if, if this were to be a game, you'd roll like a 1d4 or something like that. And if you roll a one, then you, know, you, you power down for one round or something like that when you're using that ability. Just, just a thought. Some, something like that. Um, and then the inferior function would be your limit, your limiter, 
this is what limits you within a lot of your life, right? Just not being able to get a hold of that, that function, not being able to really um, be okay with the lifestyle that that process promotes, right? Like I can do extroverted thinking things, but it just doesn't feel right to me. It's just not something I want to do, right? So those are the, the main different parts of the power suit or mech. I, I like mechs, I like power suits. Power suit feels more wieldy, something I could actually use within a game and, and kind of imagine myself as more rather than being in this giant mech like uh, running through Tokyo, um, which I could kind of, uh, I could see. From there, let me just quickly talk about a couple different modules that uh, you can kind of put your mind around, right? So you can understand how this would make sense. So for example, for the INFP, you would have your core, right? That purifier, and you would have the resonance set of models, right? And this is all about like specialized rounds, that intent analyzer, maybe a conviction shield, like a personal reflective shield or something. Echolocation, because we're all about listening, that's the brain state, right? Um, sound cannon, more listening and sound type stuff. Maybe realignment, kind of, um, you know, changing the power uh, so that we focus more on one certain thing and we can shut down other aspects of ourselves and go for that. All right, so you'd have that as your, your core and you could choose through a couple of those different modules. And then you would go into your support, um, which would be change, extroverted intuition. Uh, you'd have things like the bounce augment, maybe a rapid fire mode, spread shot, uh, maybe chaos rounds that kind of it has a chance of doing certain types of damage, explosive or corruptive or whatever it is. Maybe some quick slide jets, things like that. Um, reactive nanotech armor, kind of bleeding edge type stuff to change how your armor actually looks like, <laughs> you know, it, it changes it um, into some other style. Uh, so that would be the supportive side and you could pick some of those and then you would go into the, the relief or the weakness. You know, it's a weakness that you're trying to cover and it doesn't feel like a weakness, but it is. <laughs> you know, you think you're so much better at it than you are. Um, and so this would be about stability, uh, maybe improving capacity or a lot of armor, shields, different things like that. Um, repulsor shield, like something just to, to keep all energy out, shut it out, good, bad, whatever it is, I'm just gonna lock down, uh, maybe even going into like research mode to study the, um, the fight patterns or to retrieve some sort of information that's gonna give you some sort of experience or knowledge about something. Uh, bolt anchors just to lock down so you don't move. Um, yeah, so that would be kind of as a tertiary function using introverted sensing. And then extroverted thinking as the, the limiter. Um, so there would be some innate struggle with using this. Like you just can't quite rely on it, I suppose. Um, this would be about optimization or efficiency um, strategy or something like that. I don't, you know, I never have all the names 100% settled. Maybe armor piercing rounds, uh, just more efficiency with weapons like burst rounds or something like that. Improved output, doing more damage. Um, exoskeleton, <laughs> something that just, it's just like I'm gonna go into this metal mode and you, you can't touch me right now. Um, ion grenades, like as, as a ETJ, you know, they would be good with it. They'd, throw that ion, ion grenade and it would, it would do a lot of good work. But as an INFP, it would be kind of like, I'm gonna throw it, oh, there's a chance that I just drop it on my toes, that sucks. Um, maybe within the INFP power suit uh, style, you would also have like um, an innate weakness, like energy efficiency is, is just something that's not quite there, right? Um, so your reactor wouldn't be as strong in certain ways or whatever. So that's about the INFP. I guess I'll talk about the INFJ too. 
um, just to cover the other four functions. And we'll just uh, we'll stick with introverts. <laughs> Here we are. Um, so for the INFJ, it would be kind of like you you have that core of the protector. So you know, as I've said before a long time ago, I imagine them as kind of like sentinels, more long range, laser, one shot, one kill type thing, snipers. Doesn't have to be, but that's just where my mind goes. So you would have um, a set of modules that you could pick through um, within this vision, NI, introverted intuition, vision set. Things like visual enhancers, you know, infrared scanning, and things like that, so you can pick up on what's going on around you. Maybe like a laser alternator changes your bullets into lasers. Um, and I say this for a couple reasons. One, because it does feel more magical, but also because introverted intuition has that ability to, to kind of translate images and ideas from one person, one thing, to another person or thing, um, and, and see that you, know, you, you guys aren't talking about the same thing, um, or this is kind of what you mean by this, or it should be in this way, it would be more effective. So it's kind of changing the rounds um, in a similar way to extroverted intuition, but different. Also range, improved range. I mean, clairvoyance, vision, prophecy, mystics. You know, it's all about that long range scene where things are going. Um, the Maybe like a dampener, so like reduce damage in some way from sensory outputs or inputs. Um, outcome simulator, so running different simulations to see what's the most probable one. Elevation booster, just shooting straight up. Um, so you can get a nice 4,000 foot view of everything or whatever foot amount you want. So that's an eye, right? And then you would have the support of extroverted feeling, things like, well, it's kind of harmony, unification, boosting morale, those kind of things. So maybe a friendly fire limiter or magnetic plating that kind of absorbs the attacks onto you. Um, take one for the team. Repair drones or communication satellites so you can, you can pick up on where your allies are at all times, communicate with them at all times. Um, maybe like a morale perseverance unit or something like that you know, sound of war drums or something pounding away that boosts your allies or gives them a little shield or invigorates them or something like that. Getting really geeky on this, I told you. Um, for the, the relief, the weakness, introverted thinking, uh, let me find that, analysis, analysis, so, you know, scanning, trying to find the best attack for things, maybe even like an easy fit module that makes your attacks easier, um, just because you understand how things work. Um, improved accuracy, maybe cryogenic plating, cryoplating or something like that, so reduces your heat signature, you can kind of go cold, um, especially as like a relief or weakness, it might come out like that. Um, maybe malware defender, so something that scans and, and protects you from viruses and hacking and um, nanoviruses, nanobots and things like that. would be pretty cool. And then for the limiter, for the last function within this, this kind of model that we're working on here, you would have extroverted sensing. Um, and this is all about getting into the moment, right? Instinct, the instinct module. Um, active sensors, constantly scanning for enemies and allies. Boosters, you know, dash right into the fight. Power-ups, maybe some sort of overcharge, getting extra excited about the situation. Um, transform, like taking off um, your guns and non-critical armor pieces and putting them together to make a giant sword or something like that, so you just run in there and do as much damage as you can. As a as a limit though, remember that it would come with these downsides, maybe overwhelm of melee and stuff like that. Maybe a weakness to ballistics or you know, physical projectiles. Um, or just some sort of 
you know, exposed armor, something like that. So these were just some ideas that I have been playing with for a while, and um, I just wanted to throw them out there, see if anybody is excited by them, if you have any ideas about them, any mechanics that you might like, any frames of looking at it. Uh, just kind of a fun little thought exploration here. All right, so I hope that it was um, enlightening, insightful, uh, full of ideas. That's what I hope. I hope it was full of ideas. So keep up the lifelong questing. Good luck, have fun. Peace.